China may just be our salvation after all. I went to bed last night ready to find myself a good bunker to hunker down in after suffering through the final presidential debate. Jonah Goldberg summed it up best that these things sound like a nasty divorce proceeding. I was ready to divorce myself from life last night until I woke up today to discover literally the greatest news ever. Warriors author Kate Carey tweeted out this morning, quote, Finally, I can share our big news. Warriors movie. All I know at the moment is Alibaba Pictures and in development. I'll keep you posted. So unless you're Tennille Flowers, this is probably the greatest news of your entire life. This is, in a sense, the birth of my baby. I've been reading Warriors for 10 years, and throughout that time, me and the rest of the fandom were continuously told that this was never going to happen. Now I admit, this announcement doesn't guarantee it'll actually happen. It also doesn't mean that I get to star as Jay Feather and any of the sequel films. And most importantly, it doesn't dispel any of the misgivings that Tennille had in her video, Why You Shouldn't Want a Warriors Movie. However, what it does give me is a reason to live. The 49ers suck, Hillary Clinton's going to be president, and I have a calculus test on Tuesday. But there's a Warriors movie in the works, and if there was ever proof that a god's watching over me, this has gotta be it. So diving into this, I always figured that the best way to adapt Warriors would be for all of you to just give me a few thousand dollars per month on patreon.com slash lizardwizard, that's L-Z-R-D-W-Z-R-D, -Z -Z and with that I could produce four amazing seasons of an animated Warriors series. I actually tweeted out this plan last week stating that I'd split the original series up so that Into the Wild would be a standalone season, with books two and three being combined into season two, books three and four combined into season three, and then book six would be season four. What's nice about this order is that it will still work if we replace seasons with movies. Into the Wild would be the perfect book to adapt to film by itself. It features a fish-out-of-water protagonist in Firepaw whose desire to find freedom and a place in the world is the perfect way for people to get invested in the film's universe. Additionally, the book features a complete villain arc with Broken Star and ThunderClan's desperate efforts to oppose him, while also featuring sequel bait with Tigerclaw and Fireheart's quest to expose his treachery. This is the perfect formula for a successful first movie. We've already gotten to see part of it come to life via SSS Warrior Cats' fan episodes of the first few chapters. These videos total a little over an hour and cover the first 50 pages of the 270 page book, or about 20% of it. When you cut out the intros, outros, and announcements, these easily come in under an hour. Then when you factor in that the videos are pretty slow paced to begin with and feature additional material like the White Storm fight sequence, it's easy to imagine this all being condensed into 15 or 25 minutes without losing any of the original material. So if we give it 20 minutes for this early section and multiply that by 5, we would have about an hour and 40 minute film, which is about the time it took the Guardians of Gahul movie to translate three books into one movie's worth of material. So given that, I don't think we'd have to worry about this first film cutting much out. In addition, the middle part of the book gives plenty of leeway for the writers to add their own touches. Firepaw's training, Yellowfang's introduction, the trip to Moonstone, and the battle with ShadowClan all take up a lot of narrative time, but don't contain a lot of material vital to the spirit of the story. Now, obviously I'm not saying that they should cut any of this out, but parts of it could easily be condensed or changed for the benefit of the film and the artists working on it. I could definitely see some dark and visually stunning sequences coming out of The Gathering and Moonstone chapters, which I would love to see on screen. This movie also provides a great opportunity for Firepaw's romance with Spotted Leaf to be better developed. It's easily the weakest part of the book and series as a whole in my opinion, although I might argue that Firestar's obsession with a childhood crush at the expense of his mate Sandstorm makes for a really compelling character flaw. But since this movie doesn't have a guaranteed sequel to flesh that angle out, they might just give this couple actual screen time and chemistry. So if anyone should be excited about this new movie, it should be the Firestar and Spotted Leaf shippers who may just get this relationship done proper justice. Another sequence from the book that could be improved on in the movie would be the climactic battle between Firepaw and the Shadow Clan of Rebels against Broken Star and his followers. In the book, this battle only takes up four pages, and I'm not talking about War and Peace pages, people. It's always seemed like kind of a letdown that this huge event starts and ends so quickly. That's not to say it's bad, as Firepaw does have a really important moment when Whitestorm jumps in and stops him from killing Clawface to avenge Spotted Leaf. For all of the people who say he's a Mary Sue, this is a scene that proves that he has to learn and grow as a character before ascending to the paragon of virtue that he later becomes. I really hope they keep this in the movie, and give 
give the whole scene a real theatrical embellishment. There are so many emotions going on in this scene, between Firepaw's lust for revenge and Yellowfang's confrontation with her murderous son, that it's hard to imagine how the studio could make this battle be anything less than spectacular, let alone screw it up. Which brings me to the next part of this video. How to screw up a Warriors movie and make Tennille smirk at me. Now, all of this great stuff completely hinges on the studio's decision to make this film for only Into the Wild. The reason why Legend of the Guardians underwhelmed was because of the studio's decision to crush multiple books and arcs into a single movie. If the studio decides to throw out Broken Star or give that arc a back seat, the logical replacement would be to have Tiger Star's coup and subsequent exile be the climactic scene. The problem with this, though, is that an insane amount of material would end up getting cut, and characters like Ravenpaw Cinderpelt and Cloudtail would suffer immensely. Also, forget about the Firepaw Spotted Leaf romance, heck, they might even cut out Silverstream and Graystripe's relationship, and instead replace it with someone like Fireheart and Cinderpelt. Cinderpelt would get pregnant and then die like Silverstream, and then I would lose my mind and storm out of the theater. What would really suck about this is that the movie would end on a relatively low note, rather than the New Hope-esque ending of Into the Wild, where a giant success took care of an immediate threat with another bigger antagonist lurking in the shadow. Tiger Claw's exile was a good thing, but the effect of it devastated Blue Star, who nearly tore apart ThunderClan as a result. Not to mention, Silverstream's death destroyed Graystripe and led him to leave the clan. The end of Forest of Secrets sees Fireheart standing all by himself with the task of carrying his adopted clan resting on his inexperienced shoulders. That's why this is ideal as the second movie in the series, as it builds on everything the first book set up, while also shaking up the status quo drastically enough to warrant more interest going forward. Warriors gets compared to Guardians of Gahul a lot, and while it's fair to worry that this movie may also be a disappointment, there are two important things to note. One, the Guardians of Gahul movie wasn't that bad and has plenty of supporters. If a Warriors movie makes the same mistakes, it could still be salvageable if the cast and animation is good. Heck, even a major deviation in the storyline could still be well received, although I don't see any reason for that to happen, which leads me to… Number 2. Warriors is better set up to succeed than Guardians of Gahul was. The reason why the Gahul movie combined multiple books was because of the structure of the series. Many of the main characters weren't introduced until late in book one, or even in book two. The first book also doesn't have the big fight climax that other books in the series have, which translates better to a cinematic story. By contrast, Into the Wild has all of its major cast members introduced immediately in the story, and has a satisfying climax that builds on them. Given all of that, there's no reason for the studio to deviate from just adapting Into the Wild. It's still very early in production, and I'm sure we'll have a lot more to discuss and speculate on going forward. But just for now, we can sit back and celebrate. Our childhood starts again today, and maybe, just maybe, it'll be alright.